Hi, I'm Maya Van Rossum, the Delaware Riverkeeper. The Delaware Riverkeeper Network is presenting a series of interviews taking a critical look at the shale gas industry and its impacts on our environment, our communities, our economy, and our future. I'm joined today by energy analyst Arthur Berman to talk about the real availability of shale gas in this country and some of the economic implications of pursuing it. I'd like to thank the Chestnut Hill Inn on the Delaware River in Milford, New Jersey for hosting us today. And as part of this picture, we hear a lot about there being a glut of shale gas now, a glut of natural gas. Do we have a, a glut of gas now? Natural gas production, including shale gas, is flat. It has been flat since December of 2011. So for 15 months, uh, natural gas production is not increasing. It's flat. So uh, do we have an oversupply? Um, not really. We, we have an equilibrium that's keeping natural gas prices somewhat low. However, having said that, the natural gas price has doubled since April. It was a dollar seventy something then and it's now three dollars and fifty something cents now per thousand cubic feet. So the situation is changing and it's changing in response to uh, depleting that uh, what we call comparative inventory. The, amount of storage that we have this year compared to last year. So the question really is how long will it take before there is actually uh, maybe less natural gas than, than we demand? And that's a point where, where the price will, will, will certainly increase. And I am among a small number of, of people in the industry who thinks that that will probably come faster than the mainstream believes. Now, I don't know if I'm right uh, or if they're right. They certainly have the, the forward modeling and the predictive uh, resources that, that I don't. But uh, what I can tell you is, is that over the past seven decades, uh, we've had five complete fiascos um, based on predictions that everybody agreed on. And I won't go into those details, but they're all a matter of historical record. And so now that everybody believes that we have more natural gas than we know what to do with, it's abundant and it's cheap forever, well, it wasn't but five or six years ago that we thought we uh, were in a terrible position and we needed to build more liquefied natural gas import facilities. In fact, at one point in 2004, there were 42 applications for uh, additional liquefied natural gas import terminals in addition to the seven we now have. Well, you know, we were completely wrong and everybody agreed about that. And now we think the situation has reversed. It's the end of history. Uh, now that we found shale gas, we don't have any more problems and the United States is somehow going to be energy independent. I don't know quite how you're going to do that. Uh, we've seen these kind of things before. You know, the end of history was, you know, Francis Fukuyama when, when, the, when the Soviet Union fell, he said, well, you know, now there's not going to be any more war. Well, he kind of missed a few things there, didn't he? Um, and, and I think that that's, that's a, a liability in this particular case, too, that, that we want to believe, we really do. Everybody wants to believe that we don't have to change our behavior, that, that now everything is different. And um, how many times have you been told, this time it'll be different? Well, it never really is different this time. It's, it's, a, it's a replaying of some previous theme. We've always been wrong. We'll be wrong this time. I don't know how wrong. Uh, hopefully not as wrong as I, I think. The other thing that, that's important to bear in mind, we hear so much about shale gas that we think that shale gas is all the gas we have. It's not. You know, it's about 35% of our natural gas supply. Well, wh where's the other 65%? What's happening with that? Where's that come from? Well, that's coming from mostly conventional sources, and that is in terminal decline. Nobody is drilling those kind of wells. And so almost two-thirds of our natural gas supply is in terminal decline, and all we focus on is shale gas, which is, by the way, no longer increasing. Rig counts are way down. It's going to decrease. Most of the big, the big plays, the Haynesville, the Barnett, the Fayetteville, the Woodford, they're all in decline. Only the Marcellus is, is continuing to increase. So, you know, you, 
I, I read all this, you know, all these opinions in the paper, and I hear policymakers and I hear industry people uh, telling the public that you know all these wonderful things, and yet when I look at the facts, and these are these are not my opinions. I mean, these are publicly available facts that anybody can can access. All the facts say, wait a minute. That's not the way that, the, that's not what the facts say. The facts say that we've moved all of our emphasis away from, from dry gas drilling for the most part. And that has implications for price. And now we want to export natural gas and that has Im implications for price. So, so price is going to go up. It's really a question of when. And that's, that's, where, that's where experts differ.